Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this series of video, I am going to cover the important question bank with solutions for module 4 of 21 RMI 56 Research Methodology and Intellectual Property Rights, set 3. Come, let's go into the video. First, summarize the role of copyright societies, copyright boards and copyright enforcement advisory council that is CEAC in managing and enforcing the copyright laws. So you have multiple question into it. So summarize the role of copyright society. So what is the role of copyright society? Once you do a copyright, you have to keep track of all the infringements that is happening and you have to know about the all rights that you can claim for your copyright. If suppose if any infringement is done by anybody, you have all rights to pose any fine to that particular person. So these are some of the role of the co uh, copyright societies and boards. What is copyright enforcement advisory in managing the enforcing? So here SCAC is nothing but in 1921 it was set up. Why this SCAC was set up is enforcement advisory it means that it is going to review the progress that is done in the copyright so if you submit a copyright form it checks whether it has been examined by the examiners scrutiny is done examination is over whether the grant is done so although it is going to see the review of the progress so here the term of SEAC is three years and it can, it can be reconstituted periodically after every expiry time. So after every three years, you can renew it. Moving on to the next question. Categorize what is international agreements, conventions and treaties govern copyright protection and how do they impact global intellectual property rights? So here there are some uh, conventions that is treaties available who are going to see uh, the global intellectual property rights whether it is done or protected properly. So in 9, 1886 you have the protection of literary and artistic works. 1952 Universal Copyright Convention. 1961 it is Rome Convention for Protection of Performers. 1979, 1995. So if you can see that within a period of 10 to 15 years there are some international treaties that has been keep on monitoring the protections and the rights for the copyright. Yes, moving on to the third question. Discuss the eligibility criteria for trademarks and who can apply for trademarks registration. So here the eligibility is nothing but it should, ha it should have distinguishedness. That is you have to distinguish if you are submitting any patent or copyright, you have to distinguish that your, the product or the uh, data that you are submitting is your own data. It is not infringed. And descriptiveness. It should be shortly, briefly explained what it is in a clear form. Even the third party has to understand what it is. Then similar similarity to the prior mark. So you, sh you, you should show some similarity that is from some existing field or the existing product, a copyright has been developed with our own ideas. Who can apply for trademark registration is any person can do it who is eligible to apply for trademark, who is eligible to have the logo of their own, which is dis which is giving a descriptiveness, distinguishedness, then the person is eligible to submit for the trademark. Yes. Fourth question. Describe the various trademark symbols and classification used in trademark law. So TM, SM, R. So these are the three symbols that has been used. So here the uh, TM and SM is representing that it is under it is not registered trademark is not been registered so here the tm is used for goods goods kind of goods and services import export and then sm is used for brand services like apple uh, samsung such kind this mark is used trademark symbol is used r is nothing but it is telling that the trademark symbol is being registered so it belongs to some owner what are the classification used in trademark law? 
class 1 and class 45 where class 1 will be dealing with all the chemical that is used in the industry so uh, it may be in the agriculture side or it may be in the forestry industry anything class 1 deals class 5 deals with all the legal services it takes care of all the legal services next illustrate why is the trademark registration not compulsory and what factors should businesses consider when deciding whether to register their trademarks so why re trademark registration is not compulsory and what are the factors that it should consider so it should be considering the legal protection exclusive right and brand recognition so trademark registration is uh, you cannot tell that it is not compulsory but you have to form your own logo if you don't have any your own logo then you are not eligible obviously so you have to look into the legal protection how you are going to protect if you are owning some other uh, services or you are working in some other sectors the, uh, you have to think about the exclusive right and also the brand recognition, whether it will be recognized, how it can be recognized, all those. Demonstrate an overview of trademark registration process in India, including the famous case laws that is Coca-Cola and the Bislary International. So when somebody asks about some case studies like Coca-Cola, Bislary, Neem, Turmeric, you have to explain in detail when it was formed, why there is a clash between Coca-Cola and Bislary, what is the need, what uh, act it, it followed, all those has to be covered and this is the registration process for the trademark. Like. Uh, the, re uh, the receipt of the application will be submitted, then examination will be going through, then there is an, if there is an objection, then that objection, the claim has to be cleared. If there is no objection, publication will be done in the trademark journal. So this is how, this is the flow. You have to draw this flow chart and explain in detail what, ha what is happening here in the trademark registration process. So hope you have understood the small, small tips. Hope this will help for your exam. Please be stay tuned for more information. Thank you.